What's up everybody, Estas here, and in today's video I wanted to talk about how you can prepare for the next recession, how you can be prepared for the next economic downturn so you can make it through. And typically every five to seven years, sometimes upwards to 10 years, we see a recession, right? And the year right now is 2019. The last recession we had was back in 2008. So that makes it 11 years without a recession meaning that it's probably a good idea right now to start preparing, especially with the inverted yield curve that is an indication of upcoming recessions. And you may be asking yourself, what is the inverted yield curve? Well, to break it down in very, very simple terms, it's when longer-term bonds yield lower than shorter-term bonds. And typically, we take a look at the 10-year bond versus the three-month treasury bill. And I'll have a screenshot on the screen right now showing you guys this and showing you guys every time it's inverted in the past there's been a recession leading up to it what the inverted yield curve pretty much shows is the fear in the near term of the economy people are literally willing to tie up their money in a longer term bond despite that bond yielding less than some of these shorter term bonds whether that's the three month bill the one year bond two year bond whatever it may be that just goes to show that investor confidence in the short term is shot right people think that the economy is going to drop people think these short-term bonds are going to crash even further which is why they're tying their money up in these longer term bonds like the 10-year bond so to get into this a bit further on a supply and demand basis so you guys can get a better understanding of what i'm talking about here Think about it this way. When the 10-year yield is going down, that means there's a lot of demand for it. As there's demand, more and more people are buying into these bonds. The yield for the bond starts to go down, right? The yield starts to go down. And as people in the short term are fearing what's going to happen with the stock market, the economy, what's going to happen in the next six years, one or six months rather, one year, um, you know, two years even, right? The demand for the short short-term bonds, they go down. The demand goes down because people feel more comfortable, again, going into and flocking into these long-term bonds. And as demand goes down for the short-term bonds, what happens to the yield? It goes up. And as the yield goes up, and remember the 10-year yield is going down, what happens here, guys? The yields of these two, they invert, and that is what is known as the inverted yield curve. So another thing worth mentioning about the inverted yield curve is that it's a lack lagging indicator, meaning that just because the inverted yield curve occurred, let's say yesterday or a couple of weeks ago, that doesn't mean the recession is going to come right now instantaneously, right? Judging off of history, the past couple of recessions, when the inverted yield curve occurred, the recession actually came 12 to 24 months after that, right? So the fact that we got it, I believe the first day was on December 3rd in 2018. That was about, at this point, 9, 10 months ago. That means that we could have upwards of another year, even two years before we get a full-on recession. And that's a very good thing because we can actually prepare for the recession, which is what I'm going to get into right now. So the best way, in my opinion, that you can actually prepare for the recession is to accumulate as much cash as possible. And this will allow you to do multiple different things. This can allow you to pay off debt, which is another good thing that you should be doing to prepare for a recession, especially consumer debt, especially credit card debt, high interest debt. Very important to do that. But as you're accumulating cash, this allows you to buy into maybe real estate, maybe stocks at lower prices when the recession actually comes, right? Because during a recession, typically asset prices like real estate and stocks, they're at a discount. You can get Apple stock, for example, let's say hypothetically here, it's trading at fair value at $180, whatever it may be. And during a recession, it could be trading at $120, $110, $130. And that is a deal that if you have cash to invest, 
invest into that stock in the downturn, in the recession. Once we get out of the recession and into that next economic boom, that stock can double, triple. And we've seen this in the past like crazy, guys. We've seen the S&P 500 hit a low at about $670 in the next or in the past recession, rather. And now the S&P 500 has boomed, right? We've seen the housing bubble burst. Housing prices were low in the previous recession. If you were to buy rental properties, whatever it may be, those prices right now, you could have doubled your money, tripled your money, and you have cash flow from rental income on top of that if you orchestrated your deal correctly. So having cash, being able to hop into low price stocks, real estate, and honestly paying off debt while you're at it, high interest debt, it's very, very important. Another thing that you should be doing, which in turn will actually help you save more money, is to track every single dime you're making and to track every single dime you are spending. You need to track your expenses and your income to see what is your net income month per month. If Are you losing money every month? Are you putting money on your credit card because you are losing money every month? Or are you saving money every month? Are you making $5,000 a month, spending $3,000 and then saving that $2,000? It's very important to understand where is your money going, what you're spending money on. So if you're spending money on any unnecessary things, let's say you're buying clothes every day or week or whatever, you're spending hundreds of dollars on clothes, you're going to the movies too much, you're spending too much on entertainment and you're like, hmm, maybe I can cut back on this. If you track your expenses and see categories where you're spending too much and you cut back on that, this is money that you can use to pay off your debt, to hold in cash in a portfolio, to buy undervalued stocks, ETFs when the markets crash. This is money that you can use to put a down payment on an undervalued real estate property. It's very important to understand, guys. Just track with Excel, Mint.com, whatever it may be, to just know where your money is flowing. It makes it a lot easier than trying to guess, okay, I'm spending this on that. I'm spending this much on that. Trust me, guys, this is personal experience I'm speaking through. Tracking expenses is very, very important for personal finance having your finances in check and trying to prepare for a recession. Another thing that I would encourage you to do to prepare for a recession is maybe get a side job. Maybe try and develop a side hustle that you can make extra money and supplement to your day job or your main income source. This is something very, very important because let's say you're making $5,000 a month at your day job, $5,000 a month through your business or whatever it is that you do for your main source of income. Your bills are going to take $2,000, $3,000 out of that. And you may have $2,000 extra to either invest, spend, go on a vacation, do whatever, save, do whatever you want with it. But let's say you have a side job, a side hustle generating $5,000 a month, $1,000 a month, $1,500, $2,000 $1,500, $2,000 a month, whatever it may be, this is literally additional capital that you can stash and put towards debt. You can put it in a high yield savings account so you can wait for the next crash and buy stocks, buy real estate, whatever it may be. And you can just have that comfort of having an emergency fund, which is actually what we're going to talk about next. So it's very important to have an emergency fund, in my opinion, of six to nine months of expenses. And why should you have an emergency fund? It's very important, guys, because typically during a recession, what ends up happening? People get laid off. The unemployment goes up. A lot of people are losing their jobs. And if you don't have that main source of income, how are you going to pay your bills? Well, if you have a side hustle, that may help you stay afloat. But let's say you don't have a side hustle and you lost your main job, how are you going to pay your your bills. You'll be able to pay your bills with this emergency fund of six to nine months four, six to nine months as you're networking, as you're sending your resume out, as you're trying to find another job to get that main source of income back. So an emergency fund, this honestly may be the most important one because you need to have that security, especially in an economic downturn when a lot of people are losing their jobs. 
And another thing we're throwing in here in preparation for the next recession, I think it's very wise to study up on real estate, study up on the stock market, understand how to value a property, understand how to value stocks, ETFs, whatever it may be you're looking to invest in. Because the truth of the matter is, while other people are in a panic state, if you're a smart investor, you'll be able to capitalize on discounted properties, discounted stocks in the stock market so the next time we get into that economic boom the next bull mar uh, bull run bull market comes you're going to build a ridiculous amount of wealth and the truth is guys people don't build wealth from buying at the top of the real estate market the top of the stock market the truth is people build wealth buying when other people are fearful right when other people are scared panicking selling everything smart people are buying in buying undervalued valued companies that will grow in the long term. Sure, it's not as simple as that. You have to pick a sound company with an economic moat. You have to pick properties in good areas. There's a lot that goes into it, but the basis is that companies are undervalued at this point in time. And if you pick the right ones in the long run, you should come out on top. So it's very important to just study up, learn how to value everything and understand this is the time to build wealth. So that's kind of it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you found value in this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you want to see further content on the stock market, investing, passive income, personal finance, trading, all of these different things. If you want to learn more about that, feel free to go down below and subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this. Any thoughts that you guys have, I would love to talk to you guys down below in the comment section. So I appreciate your time for watching this video. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.